Well, good afternoon. It's uh, just, it's always a pleasure to welcome folks to Edison State Community College. Uh, today is, of course, special in, in so many ways. Uh, we're always efficient at Edison State, right? So you get the threefer today, not only a twofer, get the, um, the look at the uh, Edison, uh, the Robinson Theater that we've uh, renovated here with the technology, um, super cool podium, um, things that we've added in. And again, there's a lot of just beautiful hidden things um, here in the theater. We will provide you with a state of the college uh, dress for Edison State. And uh, we did talk about, you know, we could make it short and sweet and say the state of the college is good, um, going to be better, and you can uh, all go have food. But we, we'll, we'll make your time, uh, uh, we'll use your time a little more than that. We do have some highlights from the state of the college, uh, which, by the way, is very good. Um, so we will uh, have a brief, and I, I do uh, promise a brief uh, overview. You do have brochures at your places that have some nice highlights um, for Edison State. I would really encourage you to please take those and uh, share some of those highlights. In particular, as you know, uh, I always emphasize the cost uh, differential, the affordability of Edison State. That I would say is probably, you know, if I could send you out with a, one one thing to take care of, it would be to to spread the word on that because it it still I think surprises people that you know one year full time at Edison State full freight is under five thousand dollars one year full freight. Um, that is a, a shocking number even to people that know we are affordable. Beyond that, you know that that means you are in small classes, you are with faculty that know you and care about you as a student, and that you are in programs that all have options for learn to earn, internships, co-ops, really get you head, a head start into a career, all of which were, again, advantageous and just add to the value of the college. So um, again, you do have those brochures and we will hit uh, some of the other highlights. It is um, my my pleasure to welcome some of our special guests. Although everyone here is is a very special guest today, and I personally thank you, my husband Len, and I thank you for coming out in in support of us as well. But there are some folks that that I want to highlight today, and um, I'm sure that there'll be someone that I miss. And you know that it's uh, doing doing my best, right? And what are you gonna do? Fire me? <laughs> That's why I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so first, first, first and foremost, though, um, I want to introduce my um, trustees that are, that are with us today. And so um, I will call your names. And if you would just please stand so that uh, people can, can see who you are. Uh, Tammy Baird-Ganley, Tom Milligan, Gary Heitmeyer, Daryl Mahaffey, Chair of the Board, Mr. Jim Oda. Thank you guys for being here. And we have a uh, former trustee uh, and his wife, Gary and Emily Bensman. Thank you so very much for coming out today. It was, it's a pleasure to see you, absolute pleasure. Um, from the foundation, and you know, the foundation is one of the um, big supporters of many, of many of the improvements here at Edison State. We have Kathy Lukey, who is the current uh, president of the foundation board. And we also have Stan Evans, who's the uh, biggest cheerleader for the college in all, all areas, all regards. And um, I believe we have Mike Van Heron as well from the foundation board. Um, Roger Loring is out there from the foundation board. Anybody else? Uh, Jennifer? How about members of the foundation board, if you would stand, um, please, and be recognized so that we can all see you. There we go. Yeah, Justin. Okay, got him. <laughs> We have all of the county commissioners here today, which as you know, um, I, I assume that's a good thing um, that to get the four of you together. But um, again, if you would stand, we have um, Charlotte uh, Colley, Ted Mercer, Wade Westfall, and our esteemed alum, Greg Simmons. Thank you so much. I am so happy that our colleagues from Franklin are here today. 
Um, they have been just tremendous partners for us. I cannot, um, again, say enough about another institution that is as dedicated to workforce and is as dedicated to student success as Franklin University. Our trustee, Dr. Milligan, is a um, recent alum from that program that was a special program for trustees. And it was just a very special place. And so I welcome you, Dr. Decker. And I did see um, Bill come in and um, thank you again for coming. And I really thank you for the partnership. It's been very special. And I know it will continue there. Excellent, excellent institution. Um, and my colleagues here from Edison State, uh, you have been wonderful. You are outstanding. This is, you know, one of those, one of the pieces that isn't so much fun. Um, but again, I really uh, thank you for being here and everyone here um, will get to know you, especially in the networking portion. I hope that everyone, you know, kind of introduces yourself to someone new, right? Um, we haven't been in person for a long time, so let's take advantage while we are for real and in person to maybe introduce ourselves to uh, somebody else. But um, many, many of my colleagues are here today, faculty, staff, former staff, and they are truly a very, very special group. And I know they will continue um, under new leadership to do even better things. So speaking of that new leadership um, and sort of the bright and shiny things coming in terms of Edison State, I'm going to turn it over to the president-designate, Chris Bradlin, who's also going to welcome you here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Larson. Thank you for calling me bright and shiny. I appreciate that. Um, I, exactly, new, bright, and shiny. I am truly privileged to be a part of the Edison State family. Um, and that idea of family, I think, is important here at the college because we have always been known for that. Um, I know as soon as I came to the college, very soon after coming here, I felt that uh, family atmosphere. And Dr. Larson, you have built that. And another key word for us has been partnerships. Uh, I know that's been a feature of your administration, and, and I absolutely uh, will continue that. And that family atmosphere and those partnerships continue and extend to our students and to our community members. So, uh, you know, I look around at the staff here and, and how well you support our students. You take care of our students, and that's what family does. We uh, consider those students our own and we take care of them and we are invested in their success. And that's, that's what it's all about. And the support that we receive from the community uh, as well, that makes the atmosphere that Edison State has that is really second to none. Uh, so I'm proud to be a part of that and I'm glad to talk with you today. Thank you. All right, now where the rubber meets the road, right? We have a few highlights for you today um, in our little PowerPoint. Uh, so Edison State starts always with the mission statement. Um, our mission statement is the Edison State Community College provides the learning opportunities, support services, and commitment that enable students to complete their educational goals and realize their dreams. Beyond just completing, we, we are the, the people that when a student comes in, we encourage them to, to dream big, to go for more, to do more with their lives. We certainly found that uh, through COVID that uh, what kept us going at Edison State, and you know, Edison State really uh, grew. We really did, uh, we were very successful through COVID. And I know it was the dedication of the staff knowing that we were going to change the lives of these students. And these students would look back at that COVID time in their life and have a very positive outcome, something that, that again, changed their lives for the better within all of that turmoil and uh, kept us going and was very special, again, commitment from all of the staff you can imagine amidst all of the changes. So the ingredients to Edison State, the secret sauce. We have, again, grown in enrollment and student success at Edison State contrary to really most uh, colleges in the state or in the nation. And I get 
asked often, you know, well, well, how did you do that? You know, people are looking for the one thing, the seek, the, the silver bullet. The, there is none. It is, it is a compound of everyone's effort every day above and beyond. That's the secret to Edison State. And then, you know, people walk away. Well, okay. So, but again, when we, when we look at really the factors in um, our success, this is what we look at, our enrollment, our student success, our college life, and our quality facilities. And so um, we'll hit a few highlights in that area, and uh, you'll hear about what's coming next. So as I mentioned, affordability is key. It was the mission of Edison State. It's the reason we were founded, so that everyone could access quality higher education regardless of income, really regardless of also, you know, their background in however, whether they were successful students or not, we will make them successful students. So one of those areas is, of course, our affordable tuition. And as I mentioned, you have that in your uh, brochures. We have uh, dedicated ourselves to College Credit Plus, which used to be PSOP, which is the dual enrollment. And this was an initiative started under Governor Kasich and continued in through the current um, administration under Governor DeWine and under his chancellor and um, lieutenant governor to, again, really support College Credit Plus at no cost to parents and, again, for all students to access College Credit Plus. It is an amazing program. If you have not experienced it, I bet everyone here has touched them. But if you have not, it, it's not only a free college credit, right? It is the experience of going to college and getting college level work, understanding what that's like, having confidence when you go forward to college and then shortening your, you know, your um, four year degree into three years, two years, and you're out into the community. So it's, we believe in it. We invest in it. We've changed our models of operation to support College Credit Plus. So that embedded service model means that we have Edison State advisors that go to the high schools on a regular basis, weekly basis, every other week. They have an office and they're at that high school talking to students, talking to guidance counselors, sharing information so that a student never feels like, like they're between two institutions. They are at Edison State with their high school. And it's a very different model. It's intensive. Again, it's intensive on our staff to know these students in these schools. It really, though, pays off. We are very special. We are, as you know, a critical workforce partner. That has been the goal. And probably from my first day at Edison State, um, I really wanted us to be known for workforce. I wanted us to be not only critical, but inescapably critical to workforce development in our region, that we are just, you know, heart and soul, the blood of workforce, quality workforce, and we are getting there. We have a um, career readiness accreditation project that we are working on. And as many of you know, but if you don't know, we have a 25 plus waiver. If you are 25 years and older, you can attend Edison State with that tuition waived if you're an accelerated program and a workforce program. So we want to release any barriers, get into the program, get out into the workforce. If you want to change careers, fantastic. We will help you do that and we'll take away any barrier of that upfront tuition. And then our career tech alignment. And, and I'm, again, I've got colleagues here from Upper Valley. We uh, welcome you so very much and we value that relationship especially with Upper Valley next door. It's special, started under Dr. Luce. Um, she would broach nothing less than um, a really close partnership with Upper Valley. And um, again, always putting the students first. We treasure that and um, we have direct articulation and we always have new things in the hopper and uh, you will hear about that. But again, there is, um, I don't think there's a closer relationship in the state between a two-year and a career tech than what we have at Edison State. We're very proud of that. When enrollment grows, what's new? So what's coming next? And I will say that, you know, Dr. Larson and I have spent a lot of time discussing the success of the college, but what we can improve. What is coming next? How can we continue to pursue excellence 
innovation uh, and bring the college even farther along than where it is. So, so that has been important for us, and that is uh, absolutely my goal. So as we kind of look some, at the, some of the things with enrollment growth toward the future, we will extend those tuition waiver programs. Uh, we just passed through our board um, uh, two, three of those, actually, waivers. Uh, one is the uh, College Credit Plus waiver, which continues. That is a student who has earned six or more credit hours through the Edison State College Credit Plus program. Uh, and then they come to the college uh, within the summer, fall, or spring semesters after graduating high school. They will receive a 100% tuition waiver after financial aid uh, grants and scholarships have been applied. So it's a last dollar scholarship, but it provides that uh, coverage of the gap that a student might have in tuition uh, and can help them uh, just when they need it to kind of get over that hump and come to the college and continue their uh, higher education uh, certificate or degree. Uh, same type of thing for career and technical education. Uh, if a student has credits through uh, the college through a transfer or an articulation from one of our career centers or tech centers, six or more credits, they get the same deal. So a really nice setup to attract a range of students to the college. And then Dr. Larson mentioned the 25 and older program. Uh, so student 25 and older enrolls in one of our accelerated programs or short-term certificates, uh, one-year certificates, they can receive that last dollar waiver as well. We set these to be in effect for the next two years. Um, that's kind of the way the state goes with their biennium and so their biennial budget. So we're thinking, you know, we want to continue that into the future and attract students here. Uh, the Cradle to Career program, that is uh, a special one that, that we've become involved with. And you see here the West Central Ohio Regional Education Partnership. That group, uh, through grant support, has developed a committee that really is looking at a continuum of care for students all the way down into the, the kindergarten level and helping them to connect with careers and to be thinking about that ultimate goal of the career and what it will take to get them there. Uh, and we think about guided pathways and career pathways at the college and helping students to understand those and stay on track. That's what this grant is about. We know that those students need a lot of help. And so we have partners from across the spectrum of care um, that will help students stay on that path all the way through K-12 and through uh, Edison State completion of, of a degree. Uh, the new pathways for CCP eligibility, the state has opened up some options for us uh, to really focus on a student who maybe isn't quite at that college prep level. Um, I think CCP in the early years attracted a lot of those students who were really focused on general education coursework and then moving on to a bachelor's degree. The state has allowed us now to reach a student who can focus on uh, a two-year degree, a certificate, and the pathways that we have for that. Now, I'm really proud of our admissions team and our advising team working on making those pathways clear for our CCP dual enrolled students. And then development of new programs of study. I, I'm excited about where we're going, where we're looking in terms of new programs. One I can tell you is our respiratory care program. That is actually in development, in development now. I think we actually have some of the courses already done in terms of uh, the curriculum there. Though those courses will be going to our curriculum committee soon. Uh, the accreditation process for respiratory care is uh, a long one, I'll just say it that way. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to launch the program next fall. It may need to be spring of 2024. Uh, and Dr. Andy Runyon, our Dean of Professional and Technical Programs, has been working hard on that uh, along with colleagues. So excited about respiratory care. That's one we saw um, during the pandemic, that need for folks to take care of themselves uh, with their breathing and respiratory. So uh, we're also looking at a bachelor's degree in nursing. That's another one that the state has opened up an option for us, and we'll be pursuing that. Uh, again, somewhat of a long process that has to go through the state level and then through our uh, national accreditor, uh, but we will get there on that one. So exciting things, again, continuing to modernize, to innovate, and, and work toward excellence. That one's on the next. <laughs> 
I should not second guess you. That's okay. Yeah. Try to smooth. Am I good here? Yeah. All right, there we go. Maybe we can. Sure. Yeah. So um, again, our uh, guided pathway model, that's our key strategy. That's our student success model. So um, Chris referred to that. So guided pathways basically means that when a student comes into Edison State, they are required to sit down and reflect and, and choose at least an area of career. Um, we don't want students to come in and, you know, I want some college courses. We found that that does not work. Um, so we get students guided and then we continue in a, in a coordinated and cumulative process. So we don't hand the student off. We have advisors, they go into courses, they get an added faculty advisor, they continue with that, they get an added work experience, they continue with that. So by the time they've graduated, they have an entire array of supports around them, not just a, a handoff. And it's a very different model and very intensive, but uh, certainly has been Edison State last year graduated more students and more degrees and certificates than in their history. The history of the college, middle of the pandemic, our students were incredibly successful. And again, we really rely on that model. We are a a poster child for, for guided pathways in, in so many ways. The key of that is, uh, is our faculty. Again, um, our faculty have their uh, deep, deep culture of student success and dedication to students. And so we, throughout the whole process, relied on the faculty to look at the curriculum, to identify courses that students really need to understand. You know, this is a very uh, important course for you, you know, not just to pass, but to get a really good grade in. Um, and they have really stepped up to the plate there. So our, again, our students connect with the program faculty in the first semester. We have co-requisite faculty support in all of the foundation courses. And there's a learn and earn experience within all of their programs. And these, again, are hallmarks of Edison State. We also have supports for our students beyond, as I mentioned, we have um, you know, the classroom supports, but we have a holistic approach to our students. And we've had the Emergency Assistance Fund, which has really been a new initiative um, supported by uh, the foundation. We have set aside dollars for students. You know, you'd be amazed at the difference when, when a student, you know, they, they can't pay for a new tire, right? They need help in the short term to get the tire to get to class or to get to their learn and learn experience. And these things stand in their way and we remove those barriers and we bring those assistance to our students. We also have employee mini grants. So if we have employees that have an idea, something they want to want to try that's new, uh, one of those was the food pantry. We had a, a staff and employees that said we should try, you know, a food pantry on campus, let's get it started. They write a mini grant, the foundation funds that, and is just very motivating. You know, nothing better than to have your own little pot of money to try something to improve for students, and then um, we take it from there as a college. But uh, very motivating, and we are very grateful to the foundation for both of those funds. What's next? So what's next? Um, continuing the guided pathways approach. As Dr. Larson mentioned, we're a leader in the nation in that, uh, in the way we support students and keep them on the path. Uh, we're now incorporating technology, uh, various pieces of software that will help our folks to more efficiently uh, keep students on that pathway. So uh, think about things in admission and advising, and we're supporting that with technology. Uh, we also mentioned the supportive services for students and continuing to refine those. It, it truly is amazing how a, a life can be changed by just that little bit of funding uh, or support or referral to, to a resource in the community for a student to, to uh, get the help they need and, again, stay on that path towards success. Uh, and then professional development for our faculty to enhance the learning process. Uh, if you take nothing away, uh, nothing else away, think of our faculty and the investment that we're making in them. We understand that they are the keys to our success. And so we are committed to developing them, uh, to helping them understand the student of today. I mean, I know that's a, a topic of discussion in our classrooms among faculty is the, the new student and what it's like to work with those students. So uh, we're investing in that. We did so back in April where we 
uh, brought all of our faculty together, including our dual enrollment faculty, uh, for a time when they could talk with each other, talk about the issues that they're facing in the classroom, uh, and, and find best practices, really, to deal with those. So continuing that. And then new learning models. Uh, along the theme of innovation, uh, I'm excited that we're going to be working on a competency-based education approach. Uh, that's something that I've had an interest in for a number of years, uh, and I believe we're, we're starting to see some traction in that direction. Competency-based learning focuses on a student's mastery of certain learning concepts rather than how much time they spend in a classroom. Uh, so, so that's the bottom line there. So some exciting things to come uh, in those areas. So a key strategy around our uh, student life is, again, we, we promote citizens. So we're looking at our students as key citizens within, um, you know, within the community, within their families, and we give them opportunities to grow in those ways and in leadership ways on the campus as well. So we have our student senate leadership. Um, they just had their uh, fall float uh, two, two Fridays ago. Yeah. They actually had enough water. Um, to go down the river, uh, that that uh, the kayaks and the boats that they use are supported through the Down a River Down a Beer um, event that happens in Piqua. So um, that event helped us to buy the kayaks and that use that. But again, the student senate puts that event together. They get the guest speakers. They again organize things, and it's just a great experience. We want them to to value uh, resources and also want them to have the leadership experience. Um, they also do their right now doing a virtual uh, Halloween contest, pumpkin carving contest that anyone can participate in. They they run it off of a beautiful platform. And uh, again, it's just a great experience for them. And of course, we have a full array. I often have people say, do you guys have do you guys have sports? You know, I think community college. We do. We have a a full array of extraordinarily successful sports. Um, right now, we are finishing up our volleyball season. We'll be entering into our men's and women's basketball. We have uh, men's and women's. Uh, we have baseball and softball. Last year, last year, middle of the pandemic, we had every team go into postseason. Every team at Edison State made it into postseason. And I guarantee you, every one of those students was a good student. That's the first thing at Edison State. We really recruit them for their academic ability. They know that they are students first, and then they are athletes. And we believe, again, it makes a stronger athlete in so many ways. But um, again, we were very proud of that. They continue to do very, very well. And we do have a full array of sports for our students and thoroughly enjoy that. Student engagement. They partner also with our diversity committee. Uh, we have a, a college diversity committee out of the president's office, and we bring in our student leaders, especially through, again, the student senate, to uh, organize those events, to be uh, part of those events, to tell us what is needed in terms of diversity onto the campus, and it's an excellent experience for them. We've guided many students into uh, sociology and social services and those areas of uh, social justice because of that experience. And again, we have our um, student uh, student athletic programs that also include a community service. And we have a capabilities partnership. So on our campus, we have, uh, it, you know, any array of jobs, right? Anything from maintenance to food service to office work to accounting work. There's, you know, we're a little mini community. We are a wonderful, wonderful training ground for someone to come and try out a lot of different jobs move around, have some supervision, see what is uh, interesting to them, see what they need in terms of accommodations. And uh, we, uh, we hire the students or we send them out into the community. We are just so honored that Capabilities chooses us to be one of their sites for that training. It, it adds everything to the campus. And uh, we certainly value that partnership and are proud again of, of the people that we have been able to uh, help support and gain some confidence to go out into the work world. So growing college life coming out of a pandemic and um, seeing a lot of our enrollment go online or hybrid is a challenge. But we have had success and we know that in order to keep students engaged and successful, that we need to provide them with a robust college life on campus. So. 
what we have coming next are, are really some so exciting things, I think, to, again, to kind of bring that student in, help them to feel connected to the family of Edison State. Uh, the potential for new sports programs. Uh, I can tell you that we are studying the feasibility for uh, adding soccer uh, as a new athletic program. Uh, what I've seen so far is really promising. I think that will go well for the college and, and really attract some, some quality student athletes to us. Uh, the Charger Music Society program has, has really been a blessing here recently. Uh, this is a group of folks who come together and, and play instrumental music. We have community members. We have current students. We have staff members, faculty members. Uh, I believe we even have a, a former student alum on there. This group has been playing at, at recent events for us. They've done such a wonderful job. It's a great opportunity to feature the arts and, and give those performers an opportunity to, to share their talent. So we're, we're really pleased with that. Um, greater emphasis on engaging students through these life events and the activities. Again, providing them with the resources that they need you know, just things that were revealed during the pandemic to us, you know, there's a lot of need out there and, you know, it can't always be met at home. And so we have to do our best to point students to resources, both on campus and off campus uh, to support them through their journey, because we know that's what's key to realizing that dream, to changing their life and realizing that dream in every facet of their life. So we're on to the, the final uh, ingredient, at least in the in the secret sauce. So we started with, again, the emphasis on enrollment. We're creative in enrollment. The student success, we focus on student success, especially from the relying on our faculty. College life, understanding, you know, college life is the, the athletes and, and those areas, along with, again, mental health and the other areas. And, and last, but but certainly not least is, you know, our, our facilities, our facilities create the first impression, not, not only the first impression, but, you know, when, when a student comes by and uh, shows their family, I go there, I go to Edison state, you know, they say it with pride. It's a beautiful campus. All of our campuses are worthy of student pride. And that's extremely important. We pay attention to it. Our facilities team is, is lean and uh, they go above and beyond really with maintaining and just adding beautiful aspects to the campus. Under the direction of our board of trustees, we have added an entire, we have our own department of public safety. We have three armed officers, we have a chief, we have a cadre of security officers, and we have just formed a reserve corps of officers. So we have um, a full security force we also used uh, dollars that came to us from uh, COVID to do a over $1 million security system um, investment at all four of our campuses. They're totally integrated. There's, um, again, measures of security that include sequestering the, the interior air. If there's a chemical spill outside, we can, we can circulate inside without having to use outside air. Vice versa, something happens inside. We, you know, we have these abilities to do these things um, in anticipation, of course, of you know what's next, right? That's <laughs> your life, not mine. Um, so, but we really are proud of the security system, and again, of of that investment within student security. When our students, when we, um, you know, ask for student satisfaction, they rarely drop below a hundred percent satisfaction with security at Edison State, and that is the way we wanna keep it. Um, our environment, so we learned through COVID that there are these uh, ionization systems that one can install, and so we did install the ionization here and at two of our other campuses. Um, what I notice is you know, the air always smells fantastic, um, but it, it does take out the 99.9% um, you know, .9 of, of all viruses on the campus, uh, we did not have a single instance of uh, COVID-related spread on our campuses, and I know that was a big piece of that, but uh, it was an investment. Uh, we had the four in our campuses. I'm very proud of it. And uh, we are a, a dog-friendly campus. You have just the most adorable picture on the back of that um, brochure of, uh, of, of uh, or in the middle, I guess. Take it in the middle um, of the dog. But... Uh, 
Is that, is that Barkley? Is that a, no, no, he's white, right? He's, yeah, this is, they should have put Barkley's as cute. Um, but we have, um, we are a dog friendly campus. We were just happy. It, it came as a suggestion um, to, you know, to the administration. And we're like, let's find out why no one else has done it. Um, it adds to our campus. We, uh, again, students love it. We uh, just really brings a nice atmosphere to that friendly atmosphere that we treasure at Edison State. We really want to be good community partners as well as, you know, having our campuses be a source of pride for our students. We want our campuses also to be a source of pride and a destination for the community to that extent we did uh, last year, we started the holiday lighting at, at all of the campuses. We uh, had a company, uh, Nightscapes, come in and professionally um, do the lighting at, at this campus and then at all of the campuses. Uh, we are going to, again, extend that this year. We'll do the lighting on November 16th. And, uh, you know, as always, when you're dealing with, uh, with myself and with facilities, there'll be some surprises this year. So you need to come by and see what's happening at the campuses. But we do, we did it as a gift back to our uh, our community, something to, again, just uh, add to the pride of the community of having Edison State within, within their uh, boundaries. Our campuses, again, you know, we have unique partnerships. So our campuses, each one of our campuses has its own identity. So they're not a mini PICWA. Uh, you know, Greenville houses the agriculture program. Troy houses the um, health program, especially PTA. And Eaton, we're a partner with Central State University there at Eaton and their extension offices. So each one of our campuses, again, has something that they themselves uh, identify with. And we know that, that that is very, very important. And then, again, last but not least, the, uh, the Robinson Student Career Center. Again, I'm so glad Pat and Tom are here. That uh, difference, not only the facade difference to the campus, but the ability to provide the career services to students within that center has just been key to just so much success at Edison State. The uh, front conference room there is a showcase conference room for our students, for people that are coming in. We have a, a now we have an office in the Robinson Center that's dedicated to community partners that are providing mental health services, student services in a, again, beautiful office. They come here to our students so that um, they can reach out and our students can experience that. The businesses there know that they have a place to come and showcase what they have to offer for our students. And it is just, again, a spectacular, spectacular welcome to the campus along with the, the lighting um, that's uh, gone on, the, the big lighting that was out there at the roadway. So we are happy to do that. And um, again, happy to have that beautiful entryway. So it might seem uh, maybe a bit strange to think about investing in facilities and phys physical space in a world that seems to be becoming more and more virtual, and particularly in the higher education environment where we have so many students who are choosing online classes and online programs, um, and we are growing those programs. We, we are, have a commitment to online learning, but we also understand that that fully online learning may not be for every student. We have students who have that need to have that in-person, hands-on learning experience. Nearly every one of our programs requires that even. So we are still committed to providing that in-person experience with high quality facilities. We appreciate the partnership with Franklin University at our Troy campus uh, and your commitment there to, to uh, in-person learning. And so, again, I mean, this is important for us to maintain innovation in the future, even in that, that physical space. We're working on an expansion of our nursing wing, uh, approximately 6,000 square feet. We're, we're um, pursuing funding for that. Uh, that will open up the opportunity for the nursing program to, to expand their cohort size a little bit. They'll have new space for labs, for checkoffs for students, so that students can go in and practice in a space practice those skills, those nursing skills. Uh, and, and that's been important for us. We're kind of spread across the campus with our nursing program right now. And we're hoping that this addition will help us to kind of get, get people back together that way. Renovation of our engineering lab. Uh, 
Uh, that is important in our modernization of equipment and space back there. Um, we're looking at putting some additional uh, mezzanine space, so about 1,200 square feet, I believe, that we would gain without actually building out from, from the structure. Uh, but that'll be important, again, as we look at, at engineering and manufacturing of the future. And then uh, another great example of our partnership with Upper Valley Career Center, and that is a, a renovation of classrooms in our 400 wing to support Criminal Justice and Peace Officer Academy. Uh, Upper Valley is going to be opening a career uh, criminal justice program next fall. And so they're going to be in this new space during the daytime. We typically run our Peace Officer Academy in the, in the evening. And so we'll occupy the space in the evening. That program, again, has been kind of spread out through several different areas across campus. We'll be adding another room, one uh, additional lab space and classroom space and then storage space uh, for our, our criminal justice program. And that will allow students to conduct mock investigations, searches of homes in that lab space. Uh, so that'll, that'll be key for them. They'll be able to do some of their physical activity, uh, subject control activities uh, during the Peace Officer Academy. So really looking forward to that. Uh, new to dire directional signs here at the Piqua campus, we will no longer have to rely on the piece of paper printed on a plastic sign and set out front. Uh, we're gonna have permanent structures with digital uh, screens that will point uh, guests in the right direction on campus. And we'll have those around uh, the drive and in various parts of campus. So we're really excited about that. Uh, and then additional locker rooms for our athletes. Again, as you grow athletic programs, we only have two locker rooms. And when we play teams, we have men's and women's teams, that's four teams using two locker rooms. We need two additional locker rooms. And so uh, we're excited again about that to bring those uh, to uh, our athletics program. Uh, and then just upgrading our classrooms in general. We've done a great job of um, putting technology in the classrooms, but the actual physical space, the furniture that's there, we need to modernize it. And we're looking forward to that to making that space more engaging for students and more collaborative. That's, that's our goal. All right. Hi, so it's my pleasure to, to close and, and thank you all for coming here today. Um, we then now, we stand between you and uh, some Don Walters food. So I will uh, keep things very, very short. Just a couple of highlights coming forward. Next year will be the 50th anniversary of Edison State Community College. We'll be 50 years old. Um, so you will start to see um, some event schedules and things uh, coming out for that. Uh, it will be a, a fun year. We plan to kick it off in June and have a year-long celebration. You know, at 50 years, we still have people that uh, founded Edison State here, um, first-time faculty members, administrators, um, graduates. So um, we are excited to do that, and we will be celebrating that, and I um, urge you to take, take advantage of that. Uh, we do have our holiday evening event coming up this, uh, this year. That event now uh, is a three-stage event, so whatever your musical taste is, you're, one of them is bound, is, is bound to draw you in. Um, we have a singer, we have a brass quintet, and we have a big band with a dance floor this year. So again, I encourage you to, um, to attend. It's just wear uh, what you would like, you know, your festive uh, garb and attend, and all of that money goes to scholarships, of course, for Edison State students. And finally, again, um, my foundation colleagues would, would uh, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that on the tables outside, um, there are little cards that uh, have the picture of myself and my husband, Len Larson. Um, there is a Len and Doreen Larson fund that if you so desire, there's a QR code there. Um, or again, um, feel free, please, to contact anyone in the foundation. But um, there is a fund that... Uh, really has already has quite a bit of, of seed money in it. And I will just mention that um, when my husband, Len, does projects for people and they say, you know, what can I pay you for this project? Um, as Sean knows who's sitting next to him, he says, just make a donation. Um, whatever you think it's worth, make a donation to the Edison State Foundation um, for that amount of money. And so that you will be adding to that fund that, as you can imagine, has some nice dollars in that already. And um, that's just one example of the partnership 
um, that Len and I bring to Edison State. So with that, again, I will thank you very much. Please network, enjoy, enjoy the food. And I cannot thank you enough for your support. And as you can see from um, where Edison State is going, uh, we have nothing, nothing but better things ahead of us, especially if you continue to support us as you have done. So thank you very much. Thank you.